Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So where did this whole crisis paralysis really start? Some will say it's with Theresa May's approach to Brexit in those first few weeks of her premiership. You've heard it just here. Others believe you must go back a lot further to see the seeds of the chaos. Steve Hilton was David Cameron's close friend and advisor in government until they fell out over Brexit. In tomorrow's Telegraph, he calls for Theresa May to go and the Brexit process to begin again. I caught up with him earlier and started by asking him how he thinks the day has gone for Theresa May. Well, I think she's not just had an appalling day, she's had an appalling two years. Um, and the short answer to your question is I wouldn't start from here because I think she's got every single aspect of this wrong from day one. I'm sure they're all sitting there in a complete panic thinking, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to get the vote through? They're going to be twisting arms. They're going to do all the things that you'd expect. But in the end, all of that is a total waste of time if you've got the fundamental strategy wrong, which is what they've done. She's ruled out any other options. So should she pivot now? Can she pivot? Is there another alternative? Well, I, th I think we've got to um, say very plainly that it's not just her. It's the Tory party generally over the last two years that have made a monumental mess of this whole situation. And it's really brought the country to the brink of a serious disaster. And I think that um, she can't clean it up because she's the person who caused the problem more than anyone else. But the Tory party generally can. And really what I want to say to the Tory MPs is it's not too late to clean up this mess. And I think there are three steps they've got to take. First of all, vote down this deal. Vote her out. I don't think she can in any way rescue this situation. And replace her with? I think that's for the Tory party to decide. But you've got to have someone leading this process who believes in the opportunities of Brexit. But the third point... Y you I can't just replace her without telling us who your vision is next? Well, someone who believes in Brexit, someone who, who sees it as an opportunity. There's plenty of candidates. Well, so would you back Boris Johnson as you did last time round? Would you back Michael Gove as I you did last time round? They were arguing, but I'm not going to start getting involved in a Tory leadership election. The only answer, as I've been arguing all along, is for a clean break. You leave the European Union and you spend the time preparing properly for that, which they should have been doing the last two years. Now, obviously, we're at a stage now where there isn't much time. And so the other thing I would argue for is postponing the date of departure so we can properly prepare, because, of course, you want to minimise the disruption. You accused Theresa May of being the person that caused the problem. Many people will say the person that caused the problem was your old friend David Cameron. Oh, yes, I think the there's a lot of blame to go around. Absolutely right. I mean, I, that's why I talk about the Tory party generally having a responsibility here, because all sides have contributed to this disaster. Certainly David Cameron, for the way he left office, I would say, prematurely, leaving the Tory party with this overnight hunt for a leader when no one's had any sleep and everyone's shell-shocked, and you end up with that shambles of a leadership Yet you're election. calling for him to come back now. I'm just saying that the country needs a leader with character and strength who can, who can take the process forward. Your message is deeply confused. Your time with Cameron was spent persuading him to go into the middle, the green stuff, the polar bears, the detoxification. Did you believe any of that? Did he? All of that. And, and the central argument that we made, and one of, the, one of the elements that's probably most associated with me that captures that was this notion of big society, not big government. At the heart of that was the notion of decentralising power. The core idea at the heart of populism, I think, is this notion of people power. Look, the, the power question is, what were hands. you doing as his advisor? If you were a populist, what were you doing with a centrist I government? Make, I, was trying to, uh, I was trying to make a populist agenda happen, which is all about putting... Did you tell him? Did you say, putting, David Cameron, you need to be a word. populist? That word wasn't a word that anyone was really using back then. But the idea of people power, that was the heart of what we were trying to do. You well, never went to him and said, reasons. I am a populist who believes strongly in Brexit. And I did tell him that I believe in, in Brexit it very strongly and as I've said before I argued that actually and so did he by the way he also believed in leaving the European Union at one point um, at one point at you one don't point, think he took people he into the minister. referendum oh, right, before he okay. became Prime Minister so you go from being the barefoot green well, husky hover to, to, to the right-wing Fox talk show host Positive populism, that is the theme of my show. I hope everyone can watch. You can see clips of it's it It's so positive to hear Ann Coulter on your show talking about child 
actors when she was asked about Donald Trump's border separation policy of families and you sitting there not even bothering to challenge her. <laughs> we do challenge you our didn't. guests. I did. You didn't. I did. I said to her at the time that 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 is something that you can you want to get out of your chest that's fine their their strategy don't let people think about immigration don't let them know any facts anchor baby there's nothing racial there's nothing sexual it means you anchor the child's ear and then the child can bring in all the relatives it's a boating metaphor so yeah they're upset about it because it allows people to discuss immigration and then chain migration and chain mm -hmm. migration but look back then posner said as long as you oh incentivize people to come here from south of the border they're going to keep dying crossing through the desert sure. as long as you keep that magnet on and what greater magnet than citizenship than medicare medicaid free health care yeah that's why people voted for well and i would also say one other thing these child actors weeping and crying on all the other networks 24 7 right now um do not fall for it mr president um <laughs> i get very nervous about the president getting well, his news from tv because Okay. Um, I, I also have an idea from America. A New I don't Yorker, know if I, well, I don't, a New Yorker I don't know article, if that's... New Yorker is not a conservative okay. publication. They describe so I told you we wouldn't get a word in. <laughs> told you. These kids are being I'm coached. so sorry, we have to go. They're given scripts to read by liberals, according to the New Yorker. Don't well, fall for the actor children. Okay. And you sitting there, not even bothering to challenge her. <laughs> we do challenge you our didn't. guests. I did. You didn't. I did. I said to her at the time that... that that is something that you can you want to get out of your chest that's fine that get it off your chest do you think that's a challenge to somebody who's who's calling separated kids at a border actors you Emily, think that's a challenge it's an opinion show and everyone knows Anne Coulter is a provocateur provocateurs I guess we should say Just that's what she does where is that Steve Hilson that was the compassionate conservative that 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 would have found that disgusting but it's not, but it's not I do find it disgusting I said so um, do you still talk to David Cameron I haven't talked to him since, um, well, well before the referendum. He must loathe you now. <laughs> I don't know, you'd have to ask him. I always had the view that it was, it w shouldn't have been the case that you, that you can't disagree on something, even something as big as this, without that getting in the way of your friendship. I don't see why that has to follow. From, from my point of view... It didn't seem perhaps like disagreement, it felt like treachery or disloyalty or something vindictive. Why would you use any of that language? Your interventions came at a time when the man, the Prime Minister that you were advising, had been advising whether he was right or wrong, was trying to fight for his political corner and you were nothing to do with the government and yet you kept coming back and trying to make... Well, he was the court. one, remember, and, and George Osborne actually, um, who said, look, this is bigger than any election campaign. This is like the biggest issue of our generation. You're the one that's not friends with him. So. No, I'm not from my point of view. <laughs> right. I'm, 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 I'm. Steve Elden, thank you. Thank you.